Number 69. Using the data in Appendix G, calculate the standard enthalpy change for each of the following reactions, and then we have this reaction right here. So it's CS2 gas plus 3Cl2 gas yields CCl4 gas plus S2Cl2 gas. Okay. So what I did for you guys is I already went to Appendix G to get all the values uh, per compound or molecule for the delta H's. So they said that they only wanted enthalpy change, so I only care about the delta H values. Delta H is the enthalpy. If you do go on this appendix, um, you will see that there are three charts. There's going to be delta H, delta G, and S. We only care about the delta H's. So I just wrote them down for you guys. Now how are we going to find the delta H change for the whole reaction? Well, it's a pretty easy formula. It's this one right here. Delta H for the whole reaction, Rxn, is equal to the sum of all the delta H of the products minus the sum of all the delta H's of the reactants. This little symbol just means some, aka addition. So what we have to do is we basically have to get one number for all the reactants and one number for all the products. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to take the number that we found on the appendix G, and we're going to multiply by how many we have in our equation. Now I already see that they gave us coefficients here, which chances mean that it's balanced already, but you could always pause the video just to make sure it's balanced, but it looks balanced to me. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to multiply the number by how many you have in your balanced equation. So for example, there was one CS2, so I would just multiply by one. There was three of these, so I multiply by three. There was one of these, so I multiply by one. And the same thing here, there was one of these, so I multiply by one. Some of the numbers aren't going to change, but I just want to show you the process. Now we have to add them together. Literally, these two are added together. These two are added together. So I got to add the numbers together. I get one number for the reactants and one number for the products. So let's see, this would be the same, 116.9. And then this side would be negative 95.7 minus 19.5. So I get a negative 115.2. And now since I have one number for the reactants, one number for the products, I'm ready to plug it into my formula. Delta H, this little notch thing means standard, that it came from the tables. And this equals the sum of the products, negative 115.2 minus the reactants, 116.9. All right, let's see, delta H for the whole reaction is that number minus 116.9. I get negative, so it's exothermic, 232.1. And then just know that if you're using the tables or the appendix, kilojoule per mole is always the delta H unit. So this would be kilojoule per mole. And that's it. So if this reaction is exothermic, you will release 232.1 kilojoules per mole. And that's it. Thank you so much for reading the video. Really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Hope, you could, hope you're all doing well in your classes. And let's keep rocking and rolling. Good luck on all your future tests and quizzes. And I'll see you in the later lessons. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.